All right, so what I'm going to do is talk to you about the uh, first group work, the one based on trig 1 and trig 2. So what we did in the group work was we drew two circles, one of radius 1 and one of radius 2. I'm going to go ahead and draw the two circles a little bit large. One, there's the other. Okay, so we drew our two circles, and I asked you to first construct an angle, an arbitrary angle, and then drop down two perpendiculars, one from the first point of intersection and one from the second. And what we did was we looked at the objects that these made. And you can see here from the picture I've drawn that we basically have two right triangles. And the inner radius, the radius of the little circle was one, and the outer radius, or the radius of the outer circle, was two. So that meant that the hypotenuse of the tiny triangle was 1, and the hypotenuse of the bigger triangle was 2. So what I asked you to do was to tell me some things about the points of intersections based on the fact that we know something about these two triangles. So let me go ahead, I'm going to redraw two triangles. So here's my big one, and there's my little one. These two angles were the same. These were the theta that you drew. This hypotenuse had length 1, that hypotenuse had length 2, and both of these are right triangles. Since two of the angles are the same, something you should probably remember from high school is that the two resulting angles that are up here at the top also have to be the same. Since all three angles are the same in both triangles, that means that they're similar. One of the most important things about similar triangles is that sides are always in proportion. So because the hypotenuse is in a 1 to 2 ratio, all of the other legs are going to be in a 1 to 2 ratio. What does that mean? Well, if I go back and clear up some space here, these two triangles are in proportion. This little triangle here was in my unit circle. That meant that this point up at the top had very specific values. The x value was cosine of theta, and the y value was sine of theta. Well, since this point there was at 0, 0, we can say something about the coordinates here. The x value has to correspond to the top point the x value is also cosine theta. And the y value is 0 because that line is on the, y, is on the x axis. That tells us how big the base of this triangle is. The base of this triangle is cosine theta big. The height of this triangle is sine theta big. So what we just showed, and this is incredibly important, is if you have a triangle That doesn't look like a right triangle. Let's try that again. If you have a nice right triangle, it's a little bit better. And it has hypotenuse length 1, then you can tell me the size of the base and of the height based on the trig functions. 
the base is going to be cosine of theta. And the height is going to be sine of theta. Okay, back to the question that we were originally asking. If you had the inner triangle and you had the outer triangle, and they were similar. That was one, that was two. If the base here is cosine theta, then the base here has to be, well, again, to go from one to two, we multiply by two. So to go from cosine theta to what we're going to put down, we also have to multiply by two. That means this is going to be two cosine theta. This side here was sine theta, so this is going to be 2 sine theta. So whenever you have a right triangle, you can kind of see what's going to happen. The angle corresponds to an angle in your normal unit circle. The triangle for the unit circle is real easy. The base is cosine, the height is sine. But the hypotenuse is 1. And in a right triangle, you can have a hypotenuse of any length you want. So if you're given an arbitrary right triangle, let's go ahead and just draw it freestyle. Here's my right triangle. There's my theta. Here is my hypotenuse length. It's r. It's in a circle of radius r. Out here is secretly my circle. How big is the base? Well, if a circle of radius 2 had a base of 2 cosine theta, the circle of radius r should have r cosine theta. And the height should be r sine theta for the same reason. And what you always want to imagine is, sitting inside of this triangle, is the littler triangle with radius 1, with hypotenuse 1. So, if you have a triangle, and I label it ABC, and here's angle theta. What we've seen is that A is equal to C times cosine theta, and B is equal to C times sine theta. If I take the two equations I just wrote, 1 and 2, and I solve for sine and cosine, you get that cosine of theta is given by a over c, and sine of theta is given by b over c. So these were the main conclusions I wanted you to draw from all of question 1. And then the rest of it was just calculating some specific angles the two right triangles that we like are 1, 1, root 2 and 1, 1 half, root 3 over 2 a nicer way of writing that triangle by the way so you don't have fractions is if we double everything we get 2, root 3, and 1 this is known as the 1, 2, root 3 triangle and this has angle pi over 3, and this has angle pi over 6. And if we rotate this on its side, we get the pi over 6 here, and the pi over 3 here. And what happens is this now becomes our 1, this is our root 3, and this is our 2. Once you understand that cosine and sine of the lower rightmost angles is just given by a ratio of either the adjacent or the hypot or the um, opposite to the hypotenuse. You can go ahead and memorize these triangles, and you can solve for values of sine and cosine anytime we need them. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. This is just to wrap up what was in the group work um, and make sure that everybody does have an idea of what we were doing and why we were doing it. Thanks for listening. I'll see you in class.